Okay, so we're looking at question number five, which is on page four of your notes. We're given that y is equal to the natural log of x, and we're given the derivative of x is t plus one, and at time t equals zero, which is our initial condition, the point um, is at the coordinate, coordinates one, zero. Now we have to remember that this is a x and this is a y coordinate. And we want to find the position of the particle at t equals 1. So what we're trying to find is the x, um, the position vector. So that would be x of t, y of t. OK? Now, in order to find x of t, we're given x prime of t. So in order to find x of t, we have to find the integral of that. So we take that the integral um, so that x of t is going to be equal to the integral of x prime of t, which in this case would be the integral of t plus 1 dt. So from this, we get x of t is equal to uh, 1 half t squared plus t plus c. Our initial condition tell, tells us that when t is equal to 0, x is equal to 1. So we're going to replace those values, and we get that c is equal to 1. Therefore, our position is given by the expression 1 half t squared plus t plus 1. And we want to know the position when the particle is at t equals 1, so I can find x of 1 which is 5 halves, or 2.5. Now, that's my x position. I need to find the y position. There's one of two ways I can do that. The easiest way that I can do that is that I know that at t equals 1, x is 5 halves. So then, therefore, y is equal to the natural log of x, which is 5 halves. So I could write it as um, my position is 5 halves, natural log of 5 halves. That's the easiest way of doing it. Um, a more complicated way would be to integrate this um, in terms of t. That's too, too complicated, so we'll just leave it like that. Okay, let's do question number eight. Okay, and again, it's found on page five of your packet. Question number eight on page five of your packet. Sorry, I have to do a little um, formatting here. I format it one side, but not the other. So, sorry about that. Okay. So, we have a position of a particle, and now it's given us both the x and the y coordinates in terms of t. And I want to know when is it at rest? When is it not moving? So, the position velocity is given by t cubed minus 3 halves t squared minus 18t plus 5, and t cubed minus 6t squared plus 9t plus 4. Well, if we're talking about uh, a particle being at rest, we need to know when its velocity is 0. So when is its velocity 0? So it may be in our best interest to find the velocity vector. And remember, the velocity vector is just the derivative of the position vector. Now I'm taking the derivative of both of these, and I'm rushing before the bell rings, so I hope that I did that correctly. So to find when it's at rest, both the x component and the y component must be zero. So the particle is at rest when both x prime of t or um, x prime of t is zero and y prime of t is zero. When both of those are zero, then the particle is at rest. 
So I have to take the x component and set it equal to 0. Uh, factoring this, if I factor out a 3, I get t squared minus 3, no, minus t minus 6 equals 0. So this is t minus 3, t plus 2. And factoring out a 3 from the y component, I get t squared minus 4t plus 3. And this factors to t minus 3, t minus 1. Okay? So the x component is at rest at t, I mean, the x component, the velocity is at um, rest at 3 and negative 2. And here we get 3 and 1. Okay? But it's only the particle is at rest when both the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate are zero, and that only happens at t equals three seconds. We can disregard negative two altogether. We, no, we can't. I thought I said somewhere where t had to be greater than zero. But in any way, it's going to be at rest when, when both the x-component and the y-component are zero, and that only happens at t equals three. And that is um, questions five and eight. Um, please watch the next video with um, question, I think, 10 or something on it. All right.